This week's show brought to you by Roosters, a fun casual joint. Frank Shoup, Georgetown's big name in cars. Welcome everybody to week two of the Scott County News Graphic Coaches Show with Coach Jim McKee. I'm Cal Oaks and we're here to talk football once again. Week one, the opener was uh, one-sided, one-sided, but uh, you got, got the job done, got in and out, didn't get anybody hurt, got to see some different kids. Uh, what else What else can you say about that one? Well, you know, obviously I think it was a situation where uh, they're, they're probably quite a bit better than what they showed and we might not be as good as what we showed. It was a situation where we played with extreme confidence and they were probably a little rattled by the situation. I think as the season progresses, you know, they'll probably win some football games. They play Louisville Southern this week, play Jefferson Town next week. And, you know, I admire uh, the coach's mindset or thought process to play somebody really good. Uh, it's a class above us and hopefully prepare them for uh, what they're going to see on down the road. And, and, you know, we try to do that with our schedule. You know, we try to play some people that are really, really good early in the year to try to expose the weaknesses we have. But it was a great night. We had a great crowd. Uh, you know, we've got a great tradition here in, in a lot of sports. So this year it was a football theme for the Hall of Fame. And I think last year was a girls basketball theme. And I'm not sure what next year will be yet, but uh, it was certainly a great opportunity to celebrate a wonderful community, uh, a lot of talented athletes, and most importantly, to allow this year's team to get out on the field for the first time and, and get a win. Bringing up the Hall of Famers, a uh, couple of them from the 70s, and, and one was one of your players uh, from, from the late 90s. But all of them said, they kind of felt like they were a part of where the program is at now. They kind of, especially especially Ben, because he kind of helped see the beginning of it. And do you see that as a coach? I mean, you, you kind of you obviously pay homage to some of those guys. You mentioned that he was uh, the best lineman you've had even to this day. Well, and, and he is now. Now Brian Hudson's more talented, and Ben knows that. I know that. Brian knows that. And Brian's going to pass him up. Uh, Brian's just not at the same place from a. Uh, mentality standpoint that Ben was as a senior. You know, Ben just got himself in a position, no matter what the weather was, to never come out of the game. And Brian's going to do that. Uh, Brian's obviously an outstanding player and, and is going to be the best lineman, you know, that we've ever had here. But I, I mean, it, Ben's a really good player. I didn't get to see Tommy White and Charles Jackson play. Coach Cribs and Coach McIntyre talked about them and, you know, how talented they were. And I hope that we all feel like from whether we're Brian Hudson, Ben Willis, Charles Jackson, Tommy White, or somebody in between, that one of the strengths of our program is the buy-in by a lot of people. And I hope they do feel a part of what we do today. And I hope that 20 years from now, when I pick up the newspaper, or by then there might not be a newspaper, it might be all digital. I just, I just threw that in there for the newspaper guy. But and I hope when I pick up a newspaper and Scott County's won a big game, that I'll feel a part of it. You mentioned Brian Hudson, so let's let's go to the offensive line because I know that was one of the issues coming into the season. One of the questions because of the youth, how did they hold up in Week One? Well, one thing with Brian that we have to be careful of as coaches is to, you know, not put all our attention on the guys that need the most coaching and continue to coach Brian. You know, he needs to be better this week than he was last week. We all need to be better, and we are. You know, we've had some positive things happen in practice this week, and. We are absolutely not where we need to be uh, in terms of what we're getting done up front, but we are 10% better than we were this time last week. And hopefully we can continue to do that. The guys that are in there uh, won't get injured, won't be able to continue to play, and maybe a couple guys that have been banged up a little bit will eventually get back and we'll be in a good position there. You talk about ha having a complete game in all phases. and It felt like the North Bullet game was that kind of game. Offense did its thing. Defense with, with a big uh, strip sack and a touchdown. Special teams with a couple of touchdowns. I mean, it, it just looked like the, the complete way you'd want to start a season. Well, I think that when people as a group buy into the understanding that everything is important, uh, you know, you're guilty and I'm guilty and every one of us that are football fans are guilty of turning on a football game and watching the quarterback and the running backs and the receivers. And, you know, it, it takes the ability to make all your extra points. I mean, that's something that probably got overlooked last Eighth Friday, but Colin was, you know, made seven for seven, and then uh, Alberto Campos came in and made the eighth one. So we made all of our extra points. Our kickoff coverage was pretty good. Uh, we had a kickoff return for a touchdown. Glenn did a great job getting a punt fielded, getting it run back, along with the other kids on that unit. So you, you really 
to have a great team, you don't want to put yourself in a position where you're putting too much pressure on one aspect of the game to carry you. Uh, you know, offensive football, obviously I'm the offensive coordinator and I call the plays. Offensive football is like shooting pool, putting golf, shooting a basketball, hitting a baseball. You know, you're not going to be on every night offensively. Everything's not going to be clicking. And you've got to be able to, to make up for it on those nights and get a score in the special teams or get the strip sack that you described. Brian stripped it and Zach Coleman recovered it. So I think it's really important that all of our coaches and all of our players understand that each phase of the game is equally important. All right, we've spent enough time looking back. Let's look forward to week two against Lafayette. It's a game that obviously a lot of people are excited about, but it is week two. Well, I think that, you know, the analogy that I gave somebody on the TV was, you know, when you look at your yard at your house, is it green? Are the flowers blooming? Are you watering it? Are you keeping it mowed? Are you keeping it looking nice? And at this point in time, in week two of the season, our focus has got to be on our yard, our team. You know, are we continuing to blossom as a team rather than if we were playing a quality opponent in week 13 or 14, you might make try to make a few more adjustments to what your opponent does because you feel good about where you are. So really right now for the second game of the season, our focus has got to be on ourselves. And you know what Lafayette has done uh, for public school football in Lexington has been great. Uh, you know, uh, I, as I said many times, and, and their program is good again this year, when their program is really good or one of the election schools is, is more or less equal to us or better, it makes football better, it makes us better, makes our program better. Uh, you know, no, nobody wants to go to a game and see uh, big time blowouts all the time. They want to see really close football games that are exciting. And, uh, you know, I, I've just encouraged our kids to focus on having fun. It's the second game of the year. Uh, we're, we're months away from the games that uh, eliminate us, so let's just go have fun, play loose, and, and do the things we do well. A little bit excited to see your team play, potentially, hopefully, a full 48-minute game. Well, that'd be interesting to see what we do in terms of our conditioning level. You know, our Louisville Central scrimmage, we, we, no matter how that had gone, we would have gotten the majority of the kids out before it was over, and we did. And then last week, you know, we were only able, I think, to play eight offensive plays with our starters. So I, I think it will be interesting to see where our conditioning level is, and it, it'll tell us because we're going to turn around and have three or four more four quarter games right in a row. So it'll tell us where we are from a conditioning standpoint. The nine o'clock start, any factor? Do you have to adjust your day a little bit going into uh, Not really, uh, you know, we'll send some people up. We've played in some back end double headers before. So we'll send some people down early that will communicate with us. You know, there's eight minutes to go in the third quarter, so on and so forth. And we'll try to arrive where we don't have much downtime at all. We just basically get off the bus and, and get into our flex routine. That's Coach. We have some words with Josh Davis and Nick Lawley, seniors, uh, their thoughts about the Lafayette game. Let's see what they had to say. In the season opener, North Bullet struggled to keep up with Scott County's speed in all phases of the game. Uh, last Friday, I think we executed really well. I mean, North Bullet, they've never really seen our kind of offense, so they're kind of confused at times. And I think our athleticism, we had them we had them beat in that in that category mostly. We were firing up the ball pretty well. Uh, the stand, the crowd was awesome, so that got to us. And just overall, we read our keys and we stayed home and we did a great job. Lafayette has emerged as Scott County's biggest rival, especially after three consecutive wins in the series. The past, I say, three or four years, it's definitely been one of our biggest rivals that we play. Whenever their name comes up on our schedule, we're definitely always ready to play them. We're always fired up every week. We just we just got to do us. We we were out of our comfort zone the last couple of times we played them, and uh, we're just not going to let that happen this time. We need to just dominate the game. We need to take over the Friday night like we always have, and we can't think about how they've taken us out the last two seasons. I mean, if we think about that, then we've got our mind all rattled. The players expect a large crowd Friday night, including a rowdy Cardinal student section. I'm really looking forward to the student section. I think it's like a beach theme, so that'll be fun. We're expecting a big crowd, but once again, you can't let that affect you. We just got to go out there and take care of what we do.